What up, YouTubers, YouTubettes? So, today I'm making ethyl acetate. And so, what I have in this boiling flask is I have Everclear, which is 190 proof, so that means there's 5% water in it. And so, I've got it boiling in there, or refluxing rather, with sodium hydroxide in there. And so, that's to dry the water up. And so, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decant off the liquid and filter it. So you can see there's some little chunks floating in there. Cause this stuff that's on this ring I couldn't, can't get off. And so this inevitably little piece are going to come off here and there. But anyways, I'm going to filter it off and um, double check the amount I have. And then I'm going to add uh, acetic acid to it. And I'm going to do a, sto a, a stoiatric amount. So I'm going to do 300 milliliters of Everclear, 300 milliliters of gl glacial acetic acid, and then um, 50 milliliters of 98% sulf sulfuric acid at a really slow addition, at, at like a milliliter a minute almost. But anyways, I'm going to get this off of there and filter it and I'll be back. Alright, I got it all filtered and put back together and now I'm going to distill it and still the only thing that's in there is the Everclear. Uh, well there was the sodium hydroxide but now that's removed and so it's just Everclear in that boiling flask and so it's going to distill over and then once I'm done distilling over then I'm going to add the glacial acetic acid. Alright so I'm all done distilling and so I'm going to um, measure this out and see exactly how much I have left and then I'm going to add my glacial acetic acid to this and then I'm going to uh, add my sulfuric acid and I'm going to get this measured and uh, I'll be back. Alright, I've got my sulfuric acid in there dripping into my boiling flask real slowly, about one milliliter a minute uh, for a rate and so this is stuck here because this fused um, and I wasn't able to get it apart and I have to head out and so I just wanted to get this set up so it can run itself while I'm gone. Uh, um, and so this is going to run like this until the sulfuric acid is completely into there and then I'm just going to let it stir until I get home. And I'll be back. Alright, all my sulfuric acid is added, and now I'm going to set this into a gentle reflux. Um, and I'm going to monitor the temperature to keep it around 90 degrees. And so, um, that way it doesn't go out of control, because you can end up superheating it, and uh, it can end up jetting out of your flasks. And so, I'm going to get this refluxing, and I'll be back. Alright, this has been refluxing for about 45 minutes now, and now I'm going to turn the heat off and cool it and set up to distill it. And now I'm going to distill it over, only about half of this is going to be ethyl acetate, and the other half is going to be water. And so I'm going to distill everything over at 78 set to 90, 78 to 80 degrees Celsius. Um, because that's where the ethyl acetate bowl is at 79 degrees and so that's where I'm going to get my um, solution from. <laughs> God damn. Alright, so I refluxed it for about 45 minutes or so and now I set up for simple distillation and um, so the boiling point of ethyl acetate is 77 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what I'm going to be collecting my liquid at. And uh, only half of this will be ethyl acetate and half of it will be water. And so out of the 500 or 600 milliliters of uh, solution I have, I'll get about 300 milliliters of ethyl acetate. Uh, if it, if it goes properly. And so, um, and that's where I'm at, so I'm just showing you. Alright, so it's done distilling now, 
and so I'm going to put all the ethyl acetate that I have gotten into one container and then I'm going to add some sodium bicarbonate solution to it to take care of any remaining acid that could still be in solution and so once I'm at that point I'll be right back alright so I got a baking, baking soda solution right here and here's my ethyl acetate Let's see if I have any kind of reaction well, it looks like there's none, so that's good. Oh, there is a little. Alright, so now I'm going to put this in the separatory funnel and separate these phases. And um, the aqueous phase I'm going to discard and the organic I'm going to keep. Alright, I've discarded my aqueous layer, and so now I'm going to add some calcium chloride in here, which will help eradicate if any leftover ethanol, if there is any, and also it'll help dry the solution the rest of the way. And so now I'm going to leave that in there for maybe a half hour or so, and then I'm going to prepare this for another simple distillation one more time. Alright, see how my calcium chloride, when I shake it, it sticks in the bottom? So that shows that it has already absorbed water, and since none of it is moving, that means I need to add more. Just thought I'd show you guys that. Alright, so I've added more, and now you can see it swirl in there. And so that shows that there is enough in there. Alright, so I got set up to do my last distillation, and my yield was 350 milliliters in there before this distillation, which I'm, I'm going to get in the high 90%, so I'm just going to say let's just go 340 milliliters, which is a pretty good yield. That's like, I don't know, 55 or 60% which is better because theoretical yields 51 percent and so I feel that the reason that I got higher than theoretical yield is because um, when I put the sulfuric acid into it in the very beginning I did it over such a long period of time that the temperature never even got really warm and so I feel that that is the reason is because it didn't get hot enough to cook off at that point but yeah so anyways I'm just going to distill this and it's all done. And so I'll put that in a jar when it's done, or a container to keep it, and that's it. Have a good one, guys. Till next time.